Hey, Flip Geometry, let's go again. We're talking about Lesson 5.3, Inequalities, today. This is going to be a lot of algebra review, but we do need to remember what inequalities are and how to use them in order to apply them to geometry in the next lesson or two. So let's put our algebra hats back on and jump into this. Hey, remember those equality uh, properties that you learned? These are also valid in inequalities. You just have to keep a couple of rules in mind. So the addition property of equality, if you add the same thing to both sides of an addition statement, then they are still equal to each other. Um, the same thing works for inequalities. You can add the same thing to both sides and it's still valid. Or you can, uh, if you add an inequality to an inequality, just make sure that the signs are pointing in the same direction and the inequality addition still works. So A is greater than B and C is greater than equal to D. Um, if I have like 5 is greater than 4 and 2 is greater than 1, I can add the 5 and the 2, which is 7, and I can add the 4 and the 1, which is 5, and I still have a valid inequality. Okay, Multiplication, same thing. You used to be able to multiply the same thing to both sides of an equality statement and have the equality still be true. That works with inequalities. Um, as long as you keep one little rule in mind, if you multiply by a number greater than zero, a positive number, then the, the direction of the inequality remains unchanged. But if you multiply by a negative number, you have to switch the direction of the inequality. So um, if you have uh, A is greater than B, let's do 5 is greater than 4, and C is 2, then 10 is still greater than 8. So that works. But if you have 5 is greater than 4 and negative 2, then you have to switch the sign because look at this, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, which is less than five time, than 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8. Negative 10 is less than negative 8. Okay, so the direction of the inequality switches if you multiply by a negative number. Transitive, just like in equalities, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Well, if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. Transitive works just fine. Just make sure that you keep the, the signs all in the same direction. You can't have A is greater than B and B is less than C and then say how A and C are related. You don't know that. But if all the, all the inequalities point the same direction, then transitive works. Okay, trichotomy. This is a little bit strange. It's new to you. Um, there are three possible ways that two numbers can relate. They can be the same number. 6 is 6. Or A can be less than B. 6 is less than 12. Or A can be greater than B. Uh, 12 is greater than 6, right? So if you have two numbers, they relate to each other one of three ways. Um, they can be the same, or one can be greater, or the other one can be greater. Kind of common sense. Okay, let's move. There's another property of inequality that we need to address, and that's the comparative property. This is a little bit strange, but um, it does make sense once you think about it. For any real numbers, A, B, and C, we've got three numbers. If A is the sum of B and C, so 5 equals 3 plus 2, okay, and C is not 0, then a, sorry, C is greater than 0, then A is greater than B. Let's go back to our example. 5 equals 3 plus 2. Well, 5 has to be bigger than 3 because you're adding something to it to get to A. A is up here. B plus C equals A. If C is greater than 0, then I'm, I've got some real value and I'm adding another real value to it to get up here then this has to be bigger than either of these other things because they needed to get stacked together to equal the value of, the, of A. Does that make sense? Look at that another couple of times if you need to. Let's use that in a couple of examples here. Uh, let's, let's compare some things on this figure and determine if we should use the equal sign, the less than or, or greater than symbol to determine uh, the relationship, right? So I have angle X, Y, Z, and I've got angle one and angle two that together make angle X, Y, Z. What then is the relationship between X, Y, Z and angle two? Angle two is just part of X, Y, Z, right? So according to the comparison postulate, I should say that X, Y, Z is greater than uh, angle two because you've got to add something to angle 2 to get to angle x, y, z. Let's use the addition property of inequality here. Um, I have a shorter segment the, and a longer segment, and I say that xp is shorter than xy. And then another shorter segment and a longer segment, zp is shorter than zy. And then I want to say, well, if I add the two shorter segments together, 
and I add the two larger segments together, what's the relationship of the sums? Well, shorter plus shorter is less than longer plus longer, right? So that's the addition property of inequality, and I should say that xp plus zp is less than xy plus zy because of the addition property of inequality. All right, I have exterior angles again, exterior angles and, in, and remote interior angles. And um, we've already looked at the fact that exterior angles are the sum of the two remote interior angles. And so if this angle plus this angle equals this angle, then we can say very comfortably that angle one is greater than either of the two remote interior angles because you've got to add them together to make this. And so therefore, the exterior angle inequality theorem is that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle because you have to add those two together to make the same measure of the exterior angle. And let's keep comparing things in a triangle. If I have, if I have a scaling triangle, I have dissimilar sides of a triangle, then the longest side will be opposite the largest angle. And any two sides of the triangle that I compare, if, uh, if I have a, a short side and a medium side, well, that'll be opposite the, sh the smallest and the in-between angle measures. Any two sides of a triangle that I compare, the opposite angles of those triangles will, be in this, will have the same comparison, right? So angle uh, or side BC is the longest side of this triangle, and angle BAC will be the largest angle. Consequently, okay, BA is the shortest side of this triangle, and so angle BCA right here will be the smallest angle of that triangle. Um, and so that is the greater angle theorem. We can use this to compare different sides of triangles or different angles of triangles given some set of information. So if I have, if I have all the side lengths of a triangle, then I can give you the ratio or the relationship between the different angles of that triangle. List the angles of the triangle order from smallest to largest. This is the smallest side, so angle L will be the smallest angle. This is the next smallest side, so angle N will be the next smallest angle. This is the largest side, so angle M will be the largest angle. Okay, so whatever side they're opposite. Angle L, angle N, angle M. The longer side theorem, if two angles of a triangle are not congruent, the longer side is opposite the larger angle. It's exactly the opposite of the last thing we said, right? If I have angles that are dissimilar, then they will relate to each other the same way that their opposite sides do. It's basically the converse of the last idea. A consequence of this is that because a right triangle only has one 90 degree angle and the other two have to be acute, then the side opposite the 90 degree angle, which is the hypotenuse, is going to have to be the longest side of a right triangle. Okay, And you already know that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. C squared is always bigger than A or B, right? Um, but here we know why, because it's opposite the largest side of the triangle. One last idea based on that. Um, we, you, it's kind of common sense that if you have a point and a line, that the shortest way to get from the point to the line is a perpendicular segment to that line. PE is going to be the shortest way to get from point P to line EF. Um, any other line, any other segment going from point E to line EF is going to form the hypotenuse of a right triangle. And we know that this is longer than either of the other two sides. And so, therefore, going straight to the line in a perpendicular segment is going to be the shortest way to get from point P to line EF. Um, and so, given this diagram here, the conclusion that we can draw is that PE is always less than PF because this forms a shorter segment to a triangle than the hypotenuse would be. All right. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Tomorrow when I see you in class, you can put them in the comments field below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. Good night.